讲，但就是这样。这里到。Um, this is Haidai, Mominghai. So a little bit about ourselves. So um, we are a company for the second state, and why is second state? You come and ask me about that. So I know class wise for state. We are second state. Why? Come to talk to us after that. And uh, so we are open source fund contract technology company, meaning that we try to stay above the consensus layer. So we don't want to do sharding and uh, you know uh, mining and all that. We want to focus on the execution layer because it's where our expertise comes from. We call it the middleware. I know it's a data word. The middleware for smart contract or middleware for developing applications. So our focus has been developer tools. We have um, language compilers for, for, for different languages, for the front end and back end, next generation virtual machines and execution engines, meaning you know, virtual assembly based virtual machines. And off chain data services where can come up to us about. And, uh, including the search and smart contracts, search engine, and explore. And all those we combine into a single um, web-based product for the build ID and all the way to smart But you know, it's not build on the second state of the I.O. But it does, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a little bit like Remix, but it doesn't require MetaMask, it doesn't require wallet. And then you can um, write your smart contract, you can write your apps, you can write web stream, and everything in a single web interface, and then deploy it on public projects. Like the certain classic, you can do that in a couple minutes. And uh, you know, uh, people ask, you know, how do you do that without wallet? Well, there's a way to do it. You know, that's um, you know, that, that's something we'll demo today. You know, with all those language extensions that we have built and uh, um, execution engines that we built on the back end. So uh, we are company in certain classic labs cohort too. Uh, so we are, you know, fortunate to be to be involved in this in this project. We partner with other um, um, public projects, including CyberMouse and, uh, and, uh, and some other enterprise players. So, so um, it's just shameless talk. You know, that's what um, the three of us was involved in this book about building blockchain applications. It's published by the end of the later this year, by the end of this year. And uh, if you go to secondstate.io slash book, you can play a little game and uh, do a little discovery on the Ethereum Classic blockchain. For uh, uh, for this kind of uh, okay. So um, to start off our talk, um, you know, because we have a lot of content, I I want to set the over, overall frame or the overall theme of this talk. It's the twin challenges for solidity. You know why you know uh, developers we um, we are developer tools company. Why developers find smart contracts so difficult to grasp and to write? The first is. It's not only just solidity, but all the other smart contract languages currently available on the market. Right? You know, first is the language is generic. It has to be fully complete. So that means it's difficult to optimize for domain specific applications. We come from the enterprise world. We know that DSL has always been one of the, you know, if you, if you look at the platform maturity, if you look at the business as DSL, domain specific language is very important for, for, for real world and enterprise use cases. And today in Solidity, it's very generic. Everything has to be fully complete, so there's no specific optimization for domains. And the second is the design of Solidity and other smart contract languages today must support both consensus and non consensus mode. So, you know, we ask ourselves why it's so difficult to do stream manipulation in Solidity? Why is there no random number in Solidity? Why is there no JSON support in Solidity? It's because um, the, the Solidity code has to be able to create transactions on the blockchain. If any of those goes in there, it either creates non-deterministic behavior or it consumes too much gas. However, if you look at that from the application developer's point of view, you do need those features. Can we put those features in real functions or pure real functions? And, and for, for code that's not participating in consensus. So that separation is unclear in most of the, 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 the smart contract languages today. So that's where, um, you know, um, we hope that our innovation should be able to help is that to create language extensions to address those two problems. Because if you don't have consensus and non consensus separation, you are driven towards the lowest common denominator. You have to have all the language features that can participate in consensus. That's not something we think would, uh, would create a good language design. So those are the twin, twin challenges of Solidity or other smart contract languages today. And those are things that we want to address. Okay. So, um, so now I want to um, shift over to Haidai and uh, um, to 
talk about how do we address the first challenge. The first is Solidity is Turing complete and it's generic. There's no domain specific features <laughs> in that language. How do we add domain specific features into Solidity? Okay, uh, let's talk about the uh, Solidity rules engine. And uh, okay, um, oh, maybe I, uh, maybe I, uh, I do this. Sorry. Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah. So, um, sorry. I wrote some of the, the slides I wrote about this. So, <laughs> um, so, first of all, why do we need a rules engine in smart contract? A lot of people ask this question. You know, what is smart contract? It's automated scripts that are triggered by end results in states change according to predefined rules. Right? So, smart contract, by their very definition, are rules. So, it's a perfect match. You know, like I just said, rules must be transparent, rigid, and immutable. Blockchain is the perfect platform to execute rules. Today, enterprise rules are executed inside databases, and you could argue that's uh, you know that's that's one of the things that blockchain can really change. When you try to make business decisions in an automated manner, you want those rules to be executed in a trust-based platform. Right? So blockchain smart contract is a perfect match for for rules. And the rules engine is essentially a decision tree. You know, rules could be essentially implemented as a decision tree using different then statements. You can have a large list of different if then to implement any rules. However, the complexity grows exponentially as the rules increase. You know, so if you have multiple interacting rules, you know, trees, that every single change on this side, let's say you have two trees, each have you have two decision trees and they interact on some leaves, right? Everything that changes on this side has to result to a re-evaluation of the entire tree on the other side. So just imagine you have multiple trees like that. So that's why that gives rise to what, uh, what the enterprise software guys call the rules engine, the business rules engine, PRE. So the same set of rules might be evaluated again and again, and very difficult to validate or make changes. So if I have a rule that gives people money <coughs> on their credit history or things like that, it's extremely difficult to validate just if they set statements. And it's impossible for non-programmers. You know, that someone, a business person wants to change those rules, it's impossible. So this is what I just said, you know, so in the enterprise space, you know, that's I I'm, I'm sure all of you guys will see those, those are hundreds of millions of dollars, not size. Seems like those JS, I log, I rule, some of the you know, public companies they do not say, but the rules. Okay. Uh, let's go to the demo session and uh, first of all I want to uh, introduce how we do the rules engine into the uh, solidity as a plugin. Uh, as we know, if we want to add a plugin, there must be a way to add uh, some new uh, outposts or some new instruction. But uh, in our rules engine, we don't do that because we know uh, half work, half work, half work. That's too many half work. We don't want to do that. So uh, we just separate that we add a new grammar code rule and we just build a new parser for it and new code gen. Uh, also, it is compatible with the origin solidity one. So, uh, uh, if you go to our uh, repository, you can find we define some uh, rules engine as D, and uh, when the parser go inside, you find oh, there's a rule, a rule when, uh, for example, when uh, somebody is too old and they, they can get some uh, get some money, uh, for example. So uh, when it goes uh, touch to the, the rules, you will into our our code. Uh, culture session and finally they will combine into one EVM by code. So you don't uh, you, you don't need uh, you don't need to take care about how there will be two countries or three countries. No, it's just in one country. Yes. And uh, the layout will look like that. The original uh, solid country will just uh, in the uh, original path and and our rules will be a new section and we add a uh, New rule engine handle. A uh, new rule engine handle is just like um, uh, just like your uh, Chrome. Uh, they embed a V8 engine in it. We just add a, a rule engine handle into your uh, smart contract. So when uh, when somebody is queued the smart contract, you, our <coughs> handle will uh, try to find all the, the rules and. Uh, you must register uh, some data, uh, what kind of data you want to uh, modify uh, because there are lots of variables. Not every variable need to be modified, so you, you want to address that. And our handler will take care of that and uh, just, just filter out the, uh, something 
uh, like rules and, and uh, of the data. So um, we just go uh, into our demo, and this is our uh, website. You can go there and get more example. Yeah. Oh, so uh, let me show our uh, website. Please. Okay. Uh, it's too large. It's fine. That's good. Okay. That's good. Okay. And then, uh, let me reset it. And our first example. Our first example is the uh, edge pension that we define a person who has uh, a number of edge and a work edge, which means uh, he, he uh, take this work for, for, for a while and a uh, back edge for his his, uh, his money. And this is, uh, we define another uh, data structure called back edge, it means the total back edge we want to uh, share some money to a uh, lost person. And we have two. Uh, I will have one list called uh, the person list, which will uh, store all of the person and the uh, total bucket here. And we add a new new parameter called uh, fact insert. Fact insert is just like uh, notify our handler which variable should be monitored. Uh, in in this example, that oh the package will be uh, monitored by our handler, and we just say into uh, ten ten thousands. And uh, and we, we go through the rule part first. You just uh, write you just write uh, the rules in, in your contract, and it, it like a rule uh, the rule man. It can be a, a blah blah string uh, more. It's just a name. And the when block will will uh, contain several condition. Uh, as you can see, you can say oh I want to uh, filter to that. Uh, that's a person whose edge is uh, greater or equal than uh, 65, and work edge is greater than equal uh, five, and also our package must uh, must have the uh, count greater than ten. Yeah, and if you find uh, if our handler find that any uh, any modifier object is is uh, is in this is, is the, 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 these conditions, then it will check out uh, this these actions. Like uh, we will add the person at the ten dollars and, and just minus our total bucket ten dollars. Yeah. And another one is uh, how can we add a new person to here? Uh, we can see we have a list here and we create lots of person object and then fact insert to tell our handler to modify uh, this, this this object. And the last action is we will call the uh, function called the file rules. It will just uh, emit all of the rules and and uh, just just uh, do these actions. So let me compile it. And uh, edge, edge function, deploy to a First of all, uh, we add uh, a person like uh, <coughs> zero and there's twenty. Uh, the the first one. Okay, and we can we can just check the, the first one's data. Uh, sixty four twenty one. Okay, and we add the the second one is six uh, sixty five and twenty and two. Second one. Third one, uh, because this uh, work edge is uh, larger or, or equal to five, so we, we want to uh, add here to uh, just zero. Okay, now we have uh, three person and three different uh, cases. Now we uh, emit the k function and just check all of the person like um, the zero, but like he didn't get any money because uh, it's only six four years, and the second one, yeah, it get ten dollars, and the third one, no, it doesn't get ten dollars. Yeah, and after all, we can just check the the uh, baggage. It just it just uh, spend ten dollars. Okay, that's our our demo for the uh, rules engine. If you are interested, you can find more examples on our website. They are uh, something like like a uh, uh, text or uh, anymore. Yeah. Oh. Okay.
Uh, good. Uh, in here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you know, this uh, this uh, retirement age, uh, you know, is very interesting because I don't know if you guys read that on your times. So there was a research coming out to say that the earlier you retire, the longer you live. For people who retire like 50, they live to the 80s. If you retire at 65, you live until 67, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really important that the government has all these rules to say, you know, that's, uh, you know, who gets what during retirement age. So I'd like to show up. Can I get it open here? Sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. um, here. Uh, so, uh, I, I can see. Uh, the, 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 the line number one, the plus sign. Oh, no, no, this is another example. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So, you can see all this. This is actually a regular solidity code. You know, those are just contracts. And by the way, this tool is uh, builder.secondstate.io. You can say build.secondstate.io. It's fine. You know, that's why you don't have to major in this stuff. You know, so this is the developer tool that we, that, that we do. So our compiler is integrated in here. You can do it on your phone right now. You know, that's, uh, you know, you don't need metamask or anything like that. So, this compiles regular solidity code, but the rules engine stuff is added in uh, I Had I just show up? You can, you can see we added keywords like fact insert, and the rules stuff is just added to solidity. So we embedded what we call domain specific language inside solidity. And then we have a compiler that compiles it to EVM file code that can be deployed into any EVMs, uh, into any EVM compatible blockchain. So that's be demo, just be demo. So, um, yeah. Well, so, you, you know, uh, I know you guys might have questions. Let's talk afterwards because we have, um, you know, quite a few things to go over uh, in this session. <coughs> yes. So the next one, I want to bring Stephen uh, Pong, and, and, and uh, he's going to talk about how we solve the second review report, the first problem is no domain specific extensions for, for the language. The second problem really is no separation between consensus and non consensus code. Can we um, find a way to see the context of e e e with, with the EVM1 or ETH1.x one, one to separate out consensus application and non consensus application? Thank you. So, um, if you'll just talk you through this uh, smart contract search engine. Um, so basically we could call this an auxiliary application and what we mean by auxiliary application is an application that is really assisting the end user of a blockchain application um, and it's essentially transforming um, full node data uh, to make it available to the end user in a useful way. So this is not a second layer solution and it does not play a, a role in a network consensus at all and it doesn't play a role in updating the blockchain state. So you can consider it like a read-only. Um, one auxiliary application example would be like the Bitcoin Core Wallet. So as we know, you have the UTXOs in the system, the Bitcoin states represented by its global collection of unspent transaction outputs, but the Bitcoin blockchain doesn't actually hold the account balances. So a user's account balance in Bitcoin is an abstract notion that's fulfilled by an auxiliary application, i.e. the wallet. Right? So there's a purpose for auxiliary applications. Um, they are safe because they're really just a helper. Right? So um, it's important to remember that an auxiliary application can't really make the blockchain do anything invalid. So an example is you know, Alice here, she's got two Bitcoin, if she thinks that she's got three for some reason and she tries to execute a transaction, that won't actually succeed. So it can't make the blockchain do anything that's not valid. Um, so the smart contract search engine falls into this category of like non-consensus code. And the search engine allows pure view functions to be executed off-chain with arbitrary uh, programming languages and tools. And an example of this we'll show you in a minute is it's reading the public um, data that exists. So for example, if there's a public variable, the compiler will create a, the getters and setters automatically. Um, it can go in and grab that information um, automatically. So here's a bit of an overview of the, the smart contract search engine is this component here. It is 100% free and open source in that it's just using basic um, Apache 2 uh, on a Linux operating system, uh, all written in HTML, um, JavaScript, and a bit of Python using Flask. Um, the indexing, we're at the moment we're using Elasticsearch and that's also 100% open source product as well. So the blockchain here reads in the data here and then there's uh, multiple interfaces out to 
different services uh, from there. So this is a smart contract search engine here. This is a DAP. This is a web browser search. And this is uh, optional third party things like um, push notifications and so on. Um, we'll get to this component in a little bit. I'll talk about this. Okay, so the smart contract search engine, it sits between, oh, what just talking about? It sits between the full node and the DAP. And it's organizing raw smart contract data and uh, other blockchain data like event logs and so on. And it's providing essentially like a search and discovery service for the decentralized applications. Okay, so this demo, I'm just taking some screen captures. If you go to docs.secondstate.io, uh, there's a menu down the left hand side. You'll see this data driven DAPs here. Um, this here, with the first paragraph, it links off to some code in GitHub. And this is uh, HTML, JavaScript, and Solidity smart contract code. And as Michael just showed us, this is the build tool that we have. And so you put the uh, Solidity code in there, you hit compile and deploy this. So the argument for this constructor here is asking for an account name. So we put in dev on 5 underscore 001, deploy that to the chain. And then what we see in the build tool, when we click the play button in the DAP tab, you actually deploy the front end of your DAP. So this is what the end user will see. And here we have this account, and I'll put a value in of 123, and we update the balance. And what it does, the smart contract search engine goes and finds um, smart contracts on the blockchain that match. So what we do is we sort the ABI, and then we hash it, so we end up with a deterministic key per ABI. And so the smart contract search engine can go through the blockchain and find all the contracts that match to that key. And so what it's essentially doing here is finding accounts of contract type X with different names and it's creating the sum total of their balance and then providing that. So a smart contract can't do that to another contract because they can't see each other's data, but the search engine can aggregate. So just move on to this part here, what we call the SSS. And again, please come and talk to me afterwards because there's, there's too much to say in 10 minutes. Um, so this is the, the easiest way to access all this. If you don't install or do anything with any of this smart contract code or anything, if you just simply go to ESSS.js as an NPM package, and you just install that, and then you have instant access to blockchain data. So we're running Ethereum mainnet, Ethereum Classic, CyberMiles mainnet, CyberMiles testnet, and then DevChain. So these are already set up. We have some specific pre-made functions here for your convenience. So for example, you just ESSS dot search using address, and that's the address, and it will return data. The next thing is specific things, search using keywords. So in this case, that variable name, the account, we put that in as the data, and returns valid JSON. So then your phone can pass this, right? So it's a really efficient way to call data, blockchain data, and get that back. So instead of your phone having to get a thousand records and loop through them all, and do decision making, what you can do is quite a complex query where you can filter out. So like I want to see everything in the last hour from this address with an account name called DevCon, and then you'll just get back one record. So it's really efficient. And then your phone only has to process one small piece of JSON. Okay, so one of the reasons why this is um, great is because it's separating out, it's very flexible, but it's separating it out the components. So if you have a front end developer that's really different skill set. You can just say to them, you know, JavaScript and HTML and CSS, I want you to, this is what I want my DAP to do from the user's perspective. You don't need to know when they push the button that's going to call smart contract functions and so on. Just don't worry about that. Just code up the front end the HTML, JavaScript and CSS. So it's enabling you to have teams work together. Similar to the, the rules engine allows like a business analyst to write rules in rules and hand that off then it needs to actually be able to contract uh, the right kind of smart contract code, but that same syntax will apply and just plug straight in and work. So it's a similar concept to that. Uh, you can create your own custom queries. You, you can extend on this to provide like custom push notifications, you know, triggering when amounts go over or under certain values, etc. <coughs> and I'll pull it up there. If you're interested in building your own or using ours or deploying a DAP, creating a product, please get in touch and we'll help you. Back over. All right, thank you. All right, so we have discussed 
know, the, the two challenges and how we address those two challenges. One is the DSL is in so many different languages to apply by itself. And the second really is to add new stuff outside of the EVM so that the, 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 the non convincing data can flow out of it you know, instead of having to make social media and be the lowest common denominator. However, in the future, you know, um, we see ETH 2.0, we see a really great opportunity to future proof all this because now we, have, we could have a unified solution that use um, leverage things like LLVM and WebAssembly to build a new tool chain and new compilers and new virtual machine so that all this would no longer be a problem. And uh, I'll hand back to Haida and, and to, to talk about the work that we do with LLVM and Iwazam. And this is a collaborative, it's a collaboration project between the second stage and the, the, the Eastern Classic Labs. Oh, okay, uh, let's talk about the uh, full benefit that uh, when we in integrate LVM into <coughs> our uh, tool chain, why, why is the part? And first of all, because uh, LVM uh, developed a long, long ago, it's just like your uh, GCC compile. Uh, so it, it, it can support like uh, C++, C, or Rust, or blah, blah, blah. All you can see is they all will have uh, a front end there. So, so we can support more programming language you, uh, if you are not interested with uh, uh, just the uh, solidity, you want to use your your uh, your uh, other language, yes, you can use LVN. And the other part is that uh, with LVN, if you want to define a new target, why is new target just something like that? We have uh, the EVM1, we have the uh, Iwasan. Maybe if uh, one day happens, maybe there will be the Iwasan, or uh, maybe it will be EVM3 or 4 or 5. So uh, LVN provides a, a mechanism that we can very easily to <coughs> define a new target. And uh, this is independent with your front end, so you don't need to have to translate your uh, solidity directly to the new target. You can uh, uh, use the LVN, it has an a intermediate format called LVN IR. So every language will be transformed into a, a, uni, uh, a uniform, uniform language and then use this language into the uh, different targets. So this is a, a second uh, second part. And, and the uh, uh, surprise is that we have uh, lots of uh, uh, debuggers or linkers or blah blah something uh, tool chain for the LVN. So when we just uh, integrate the LVN into the, uh, the broad chain tool chain, so uh, the debuggers, uh, we don't need to uh, just redo it. We can here in damage the, the current LDB or something like that. And the, the first part is uh, we want to talk about more uh, after then. Uh, that is, uh, with the LVM framework, we can define a new uh, gas optimization skill that, that can be uh, just like uh, because I have a uniform format here, and so we, we can just uh, modify each optimization pass. Uh, what kind of thing going to apply can. can um, can reduce the uh, uh, gas consumption, something like that. Okay, so uh, the first part is like this, more programming language, more EVMs. And uh, all of those things will be be uh, translated, whatever is Solidity or Viper or Rust or C++ or any front-end language, they will be, uh, uh, they will be passed and be constructed by SD and construed, and finally we generate the LVNIR, and in the face, we call it optimizer because we can add lots of optimization here. Something like we can uh, uh, reduce the uh, reduce the deco, or uh, we can we can just simplify lots of uh, uh, addition or multiplication, something like that. And finally, we have uh, lots of bad support here. And not only the VM one, it wasn't. Also, we can generate this uh, this file into. Uh, like um, um, your native environment that's that's all possible. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the second part is uh, I mentioned that before we've got a lot of debugger linkers, optimizer or, or something like that, and, and we can uh, we can make the performance more more higher. And 
this is our uh, our approach to uh, to detect the gas sub consumption and um, to, uh, to to reduce the gas consumption of the, the current uh, ESR application. Uh, actually, in 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 this flow, flow chart, we only do one thing. That is, we model the LVN IR with the native uh, bytecode, so we can know every instruction in in high level. Uh, the cost is is uh, the cost is like uh, 100, 200, or something like that. And we can apply lots of different uh, uh, here, uh, just to like here, well, we, we map in the uh, assembly, so the Inversion or EVN, and back into the LVIR. So we have a cost model here. And when we have a cost model here, we can apply the uh, the traditional energy consumption issue, the optimization of that into uh, this model, and we can just apply those optimization facts into here, and we get a uh, um, more gas optimizes uh, by code here. Okay. So uh, let's go into the demo part. Uh, I will show you how to use our compiler uh, to compile your satellite code uh, into LVIR and finally deploy it into the uh, EWAS. Uh, I think for the EVM part, it's very uh, quick. Uh, uh, and I think the Alan will, will uh, very quickly to release the, the demo first uh, for the uh, EVM target. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so first of all, you need, need to connect the MetaMaster to the uh, it was a test net, uh, just set up like this. And this, oh, uh, I don't know why why it's just here, but we we'll skip it. And we can build it from source. You can get going it. So you can uh, set the entry and macro blah blah blah. But it takes lots of time. If you use this network, it may be take uh, one hour to build it. So I think it's too long. We have uh, a image, so you can just pull it, you can just run it, and uh, execution the uh, command in our uh, uh, next slide and to get a get a uh, micro. So uh, I think I can I can do the uh, I can do the demo directly. Okay. So uh, is large enough? Oops. I run the uh, I run the uh, dark image of the SOL demo, and first of all, you need to uh, create a contract, and uh, wait a minute, let me copy it here. Oh, yeah, I have uh, another copy here. Okay, so just press it. Uh, as you can see, this is a ERC20 contract, and we have a total supply, we have balances, and we have an event called transfer, and here is a, a constructor, you can sell the uh, total supply, you can sell the initialized uh, basic balances, and also a function called uh, balance off, you can uh, query it, and finally this is a transfer function, and uh, if you want to add the self mask protection, you can just uh, include the library and use it, that's, uh, that's fine. Uh, but for the demo groups, I just remove them. Yes. And when you use uh, uh, SOLL, you can get the help menu like this. And no worries, we just will need to compare it uh, action plus init LVM and of the contract, contract SOL. And when you cross press enter, you get lots of LVM IR. But don't worry about that. You need. You don't need to uh, modify any line of that. You just uh, you just pipeline this this output into a contract LL, and we have a uh, uh, we have a uh, helper uh, in the SOL and you uh, sorry you uh, close and compile plus V and the input is contract LL. Okay. Uh, after all, you can see that we use lots of like LVN link, uh, LVN optimizer, LVN compiler, and was an LP to create the uh, web assembly part. And you will get two WASP file. One is the 
run type file called country that was it. Another is the uh, deploy file called the country deployment. And the final part, you want to deploy that into the Ethereum it was a Python. Here. What should we do? Uh, just back here, and you can find uh, it wasn't has net and oh, something like here, and just sum your transaction because uh, uh, I think that's the, the only way to, to deploy your country there. And because you need to pass your 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 old wasn't to here, so you you need to decode this uh, binary file into a stream. Uh, we have we have provided the the the, uh, the command here. Just copy that and enter. Okay, you got the, this this uh, lots of string. This is your contract, and because it's very very large, so I need to uh, just uh, just scroll down our uh, my terminal and okay. Oops. Thank you. 